it's sort of a stunning thing to see these cars in this environment. It's fascinating just to be able to come this close to them. People need to know how America got to where it is today, and the history of automobiles is a huge part of that. We're out here at the National Mall for the Historic Vehicle Association's Cars at the Capitol. An amazing time that we get to celebrate not just cars, but the stories behind them that have been so impactful to our American culture. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to our fifth annual Cars at the Capitol. Today is about pioneering efforts and taking a path that's somewhat unpaved. It's those efforts and the people behind them that make these vehicles here come alive. At the HVA, we believe that America's automotive heritage should never be lost or forgotten. And our contribution towards that is a program that documents and records historically significant vehicles in perpetuity. That program is the National Historic Vehicle Register. Introducing the National Historic Vehicle Register in 2014 was a game changer. The recognition of automobiles as a significant part of our culture, not just a hobby. The idea behind our collection at the Library of Congress is to last a minimum of 500 years. So we're playing the long game here. I think the HVA has found a unique niche, their cause and the things that they're trying to preserve and educate the people that live in this country about is gonna make a difference. People love to learn about their history, about their culture. The automobile is no different. It's not just the tool of getting people here and there. It's a piece of information about how we lived and what was important to us and what we were able to accomplish. Those kind of stories resonate across generations, no matter whether you're seven or seven. In November of 1969, Apollo 12 was the second crewed mission to the moon. Alan Bean was the lunar module pilot. He was the fourth human to ever step foot on the moon. This 1969 Corvette sitting before you was Alan Bean's daily driver as he went to training every day for the space program. The space race in the 1960s. This is about the great things we can do for science, for technology, for our country. The 1969 Corvette is just an awesome thing to celebrate in the year that we're also celebrating the space program. Such a great effort around space exploration and breaking boundaries. That car, every time I look at it, I think of how the space program brought the world back together. There was a dollar a year lease program for all Chevrolet vehicles for astronauts. It turns out the golden boys of American space travel, the rocket jockeys, if you will, preferred high-performance cars. What we found is most of the humans that have set foot on the moon actually own Corvettes. And the Corvette that we have brought was one of three cars of the Apollo 12 astronauts that all matched. You know, three guys had the opportunity to drive one. It's unbelievable, and it's in incredible condition. I like the design, their shape, their function, and for a lot of the old sports cars, they're sound. Annie is the current owner of this 1969 Corvette Stingray. He's owned it for 48 years. Mr. Reed made it his business to make sure that car did not disappear into a back lot or get chopped up. Danny, for your stewardship of this iconic piece of automotive history, we're pleased to present you with this stewardship award. This car has opened so many doors for me, and it's been unbelievable. It's quite a ride, but being registered as a historic vehicle, this is the highlight of the car right now. Right here in the middle of the National Mall, you have every type of person walking by, tourists, locals, school kids, and every time that they look at one of these vehicles, that's a new person recognizing our automotive heritage, which is just so cool. It's a major traffic area where people will flow through during the day. They are often looking for something to entice them, and we've got two pristine examples for them to come and learn about significant vehicles from our past. I would have never seen it before. If I hadn't actually walked by and seen it, it's great. And being right here where you have a lot of history, they just adds to it. You're putting in the path of anyone who comes to Washington, D.C., wide-ranging vehicles associated with many different aspects of history. And a whole story unravels about how that car matters. Esau and Janie B. Jenkins owned this 1966 Volkswagen Microbus, but it is officially known as the Deluxe Station Wagon. They were both born in 1910, they were married at 17 years old, and they dedicated their lives to the betterment of their community. It's hard to believe that any two people in a lifetime could accomplish the things that they did. 
After they dropped kids off to school, they would drive the adults to Charleston or other areas. During that time, they would educate them. They would teach them how to read. They would teach them about the literacy tests and how to become registered voters. A regular person back in their community was trying to make a difference. He used buses to transport people to a better life. It was a vehicle for good, you know, in a time of uncertainty for a vast population of Americans. It's important, especially for our young people, to know the types of sacrifices that people made throughout the years. Who drove this bus? Esau Jenkins drove this bus. And what did he do? He, he transported black people to the schools. And anywhere they needed to go, what else did he do? He took people and thousands of black people got registered to vote. So he was a great, great civil rights leader in that time. This is an object that embodies all of those things that the Jenkins family did. It touches my heart to see my grandparents bus here. The work that they've done throughout the years is still touching people's lives. I just hope that my generation and those that follow keep that same mindset that they do things that will make the world a better place. I like how it's like beat up. It's really cool. The bus sat in a backyard 40 years. It survived hurricanes. It survived really harsh seaside climate. The grand and great grandkids would play hide and go seek, run around it, climb, jump on it. We worked with the family and a number of other partners to pull that bus out to tell the story for years and years into the future. It was recoverable, it was able to be stabilized, and the transformation is great. It's being resuscitated, but not totally cleaned up. The authentic vehicle is clear and remains. As I grew older, I learned a little bit more of what he did, and it gave me the pride that I had today. I've had it all my life and walk with it strongly. The hope is for anyone that comes through here to have the opportunity to see how they can make a difference in this world. On behalf of the HVA, we are pleased to present you with a Stewardship Award. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You know where the belt is, right? Yeah. We are mechanical engineers, both of us. So it's exciting to see cars here. We were just very curious to see how they designed the cars back then. People just, they light up. Especially at night, they're grinning from ear to ear to see this beautiful lit car in the middle of the National Mall where they wouldn't ever expect it otherwise. I was pretty impressed by the glass case, honestly. It really shows that like you have a, a cool artifact from like far away when you're walking down. It's fun to see. Memories. Cars you could relate to, because I had one just like it. <laughs> It is kind of nice, the contrast between the shiny Corvette and the Volkswagen bus. Both of them are very, very unique stories, and I love the fact that the Historic Vehicle Association is presenting this story to us. I am hard-pressed to think of two more deserving vehicles to be entered into the Historic Vehicle Register and their documentation entered into our collection at the Library of Congress.